and welcome to the session on slip gauges. Let us begin with the session. Let us look at the objectives of this session. At the end of this session, you will be able to state different types of standards for length measurement, define the features of slip gauges, state the number of slips in standard, state the different grades of slip gauges, determine slip gauges for different sizes, State the precautions and application of slip gauges. The three standards for length measurement are Line standards, End standards, Wavelength standards. When the length being measured is expressed as the distance between two lines, it is referred to as line standards. When the length being measured is expressed as the distance between two surfaces or ends, it is referred to as end standards. The wavelength of light is the primary standard for length measurement to avoid problems associated with variation in length of metallic standards. Slip gauges also known as gauge blocks or Johansson gauge blocks, are a type of end standards. Slip gauges are the universally accepted standard of length. These are the simplest possible means of measuring linear dimensions very accurately. These are rectangular blocks having a cross section of about 30 mm by 9 mm. Slip gauge blocks are either made of metal or ceramic. The two opposing faces are lapped precisely flat and parallel to a definite size within close tolerances for high degree of accuracy. Standard grade blocks are made of a high grade alloy steel stabilized for high dimensional stability and hardened for better wear resistance. Calibration and inspection grade blocks are made of tungsten carbide, chromium carbide or ceramic. Calibration and inspection grade blocks are much harder, high wear resistant with low thermal expansion in comparison with standard grade blocks. Slip gauges are available in various sets of different sizes with different numbers. These sets are available in both metric and English units. The slip gauge sets are specified based on standard unit and number of pieces in the set. For example, M87 slip gauge set means it is a metric standard set that is gauge blocks are in millimeters and the set consists of 87 pieces. Similarly, E81 slip gauge set means it is an English or imperial standard set that is, gauge blocks are in inches and the set consists of 87 pieces. Some commonly available metric sets are as follows. M112 This set consists of total 112 pieces in 4 series with a special piece. The first series has 9 pieces from 1.001 to 1.009 mm in steps of 1 micron. The second series has 49 pieces from 1.01 to 1.49 mm in steps of 10 microns. The third series has 49 pieces from 0.5 to 24.5 mm in steps of 0.5 mm. 
The fourth series has four pieces from 25 to 100 mm in steps of 25 mm and a single special piece of 1.0005 mm. M103 This set consists of total 103 pieces in four series. The first series has only one piece of 1.005 mm. The second series has 49 pieces from 1.01 .01 to 1.49 mm in steps of 10 microns. The third series has 49 pieces from 0.5 to 24.5 mm in steps of 0.5 mm. The fourth series has four pieces from 25 mm to 100 mm in steps of 25 mm. M87 This set consists of total 87 pieces in four series. The first series has 9 pieces from 1.001 to 1.009 mm in steps of 1 micron. The second series has 49 pieces from 1.01 to 1.49 mm in steps of 10 microns. The third series has 19 pieces from 0.5 to 9.5 mm in steps of 0.5 mm. The fourth series has 10 pieces from 10 to 100 mm in steps of 10 mm. M46 The set consists of total 46 pieces in 5 series. The first series has 9 pieces from 1.001 .001 to 1.009 mm in steps of 1 micron. The second series has 9 pieces from 1.01 .01 to 1.09 mm in steps of 10 microns. The third series has 9 pieces from 1.10 to 1.90 mm in steps of 0.1 mm. The fourth series again has 9 pieces from 1 to 9 mm in steps of 1 mm. The fifth series has 10 pieces from 10 to 100 mm in steps of 10 mm. The slip gauge set is again classified into various grades based on their accuracy or based on class of work. Grade 2 this is used in workshop for rough checks, for ordinary inspection work, for setting up machine tools and for measurement where production tolerances are relatively wide. Grade 1 This is used for more precise work such as setting up sign bars, checking gap gauges, measurement of components, tools, etc. Grade 0 this is used for tool room or machine shop inspection. Grade 00 This is also termed as inspection grade block. This is used for highest precision work such as measuring grade 1 and 2 gauges. Calibration grade This is a special grade used to calibrate inspection blocks and very high precision gauging. Some sets of slip gauges also contain protector slips of standard thickness which are made of tungsten carbide. Protective slips used on both ends of the slip gauge stack will ensure the prolonged life of the slip gauges against wear and damages. Now let us learn to stack the slip gauges to a required dimension by ringing the slip gauges. When a particular size gauge block is not available, it can be built up by ringing individual slip gauges together. Ringing is the process of joining the slip gauges together to a required size. The procedure for ringing involves the following steps. 
First, wipe the slip gauges with a clean chamois leather cloth. The first method of ringing is known as cross ringing. In this, one slip gauge is slid perpendicularly over the other by applying a moderate pressure to form a cross or plus. Finally, the block is rotated until it is in line with the other block. The second method of ringing is known as parallel ringing, where one slip gauge is slid parallel over the other by applying a moderate pressure. While selecting slip gauges for a particular size from the available set of slip gauges, first consider the last digit or decimal of the size to be built up. Then consider the last two digits of the subsequent value and continue to select the pieces until the required size is available. Use a minimum number of blocks as far as possible while building up a particular dimension. Now let us see an example of building up a slip gauge stack to a size of 44.872 mm using M87 slip gauge set. The required dimension is 44.872 mm. Now let us select the slip gauge from the slip gauge set for the last decimal place. That is 1.002 mm from the first series of the set and let us subtract this from the 44.872 mm. Now check the slip gauge for the last decimal place which is 1.37 mm from the second series of the set and let us subtract this from 43.87 mm. Now again check the slip gauge for the last decimal place which is 2.5 mm from the third series of the set and let us subtract this from 42.25 mm. Now finally select the 40 mm slip from the fourth series of the set. After completing the selection of slip gauges from the set, wipe them with a clean chamois leather cloth. Ring the selected four slip gauges as discussed earlier. And while building the slip gauges, start ringing with the largest slip gauges and finish with the smallest. Now let us learn about the care and maintenance of slip gauges while handling. General care of slip gauges involve the following. While storing the slip gauges, protect the surfaces against climatic conditions by applying suitable anti-corrosive agent such as petroleum jelly. Keep the slip gauges in a suitable case and close the case when not in use. Protect gauges from dirt and dust. We should not magnetize, otherwise it will attract metallic dust. Preparation of slip gauges before use or ringing involves the following. Remove or clean applied petroleum jelly with petrol if carbon tetrachloride is not available. Wipe and clean the gauges with clean chamois leather cloth. Care while using the slip gauges involve the following. While holding the slip gauges, do not touch the lapped surfaces. Gauge blocks are calibrated to be accurate at about 20 degrees Celsius. When not in use, always keep the slip gauges inside the case.
do not place the measuring face or lap face resting on any other surfaces unnecessarily. Do not leave the gauges wrung together when not in use. Use a felt pad or rubber mat for placing the instruments while working. Handle the instruments with care and do not allow them to mix up with other tools. To recap, we have learned to state different types of standards for length measurement, define the features of slip cages, state the number of slips in standard, state the different grades of slip cages, determine slip cages for different sizes, state the precautions and application of slip cages. So that's all about slip cages. Hope you have understood all the concepts and exercises. See you in the next session.